What a load of fucking bullshit. Let me start off by saying in this review, I fucking hate Triple H. Oh, you little YWC little motherfuckers want to come at me for saying that? I say fuck him. He was involved in a great match last night at Extreme Rules. But all that means shit. Because Triple H is a straight fucking asshole. This guy doesn't know when to fucking quit. Doesn't want to hang up the boots ever. Doesn't know when to just fucking give it up. This motherfucker is beyond fucking shit. I mean, he just... He, he buries everybody. It doesn't matter. And, and when he does put somebody over... Let me just start with the review, and we will get to the Triple H rant in due time. We start off with a Ryback promo, drives an ambulance in. Somehow, you know, he's taking all credit. He thinks that, you know, we all think this is cool. I wasn't impressed. You know, uh, like I said, a, a good match from Ryback last night. Uh, an excellent match with him and Cena. Give credit where credit's due, but I still don't like the man. I still don't like the character. Not an awful promo, but nothing to really capture my interest. Say I'm just somebody turning on the fucking TV. What is Ryback saying that's going to captivate me? Absolutely fucking nothing. Just a boring fucking promo. The only difference here is he was standing on top of an ambulance like a goofball. That's about it. Then we got our first match as Jericho and The Miz defeating Fandango and Wade Barrett. Now, I said good things about Fandango in the Extreme Rules match. Now, I have to just clarify this because people like to distort shit that I say. And this is the God's honest truth right here. He had a good match, but he still fucking sucks. And why is that? How? You know, he had a good match. How could he still suck, Brad? I'll tell you why. Watch this fucking match. The middle of the match doesn't even fucking wrestle one fucking bit. Gets in about a move or some shit like that. And then his music starts playing. First they're showing picture in picture shit with the app. Then they got Fandango dancing ringside with Summer Rae. And I'm like, ah, you know, like, how many fucking things are going to go on this goddamn service? I feel like I'm at a fucking carnival. I feel like I'm at the World's Fair, the State Fair or some shit. I'm expecting fucking clowns to jump out of cars like there's fucking hundreds of clowns inside cars with big fucking floppy shoes and shit. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And, you know, then it's just a boring finish. Jericho and Miz just hitting their moves and that that's it. That's it. And Fandangle's just out there. And then Jericho, uh, you know, he, he he's like dancing with Summer Rae. She seems quite taken with him. Doesn't kiss her or anything. Doesn't grope her like a normal man would getting that close to a woman. Instead, what does he do? Hey, he just does the uh, hand to the face, which was funny. But when I thought about it, I'm like, that's such an old fucking reference. 1997 called. They want their fucking hand reference back. Talk to the hand. This show could fucking talk to my hand, talk to my ass, talk to my fucking cock. It sucks. Already, we got stupid shit starting off the show. Yeah, after a great pay-per-view. Got a shitty show with retardation all over the fucking place. Already. Then it's Sheamus and Titus O'Neil in what is an okay match. The only thing, though, this match showed me is that Titus O'Neil is a lot more talented than Sheamus. First of all, you know, his power moves are just as good as Sheamus. And... He's got way more charisma than him. The guy already proved that, you know, he could get it done on the mic. And, you know, the extended offense, he was dominating a large portion of this match. Not a fantastic match, but an okay match. Now, you know, for a throwaway match like this, basically, it was okay. But, you know, the extended offense that he got, it seems like maybe, just maybe, even though he lost, that, you know... They might be considering something with O'Neal. I don't know what's taking so fucking long. It's not like they got anything else going for him now. Especially, uh, just wait and see. I can't wait to talk about the rest of this show. They, you know, it, it's just, it's retarded to think about 
uh, that they've got nothing going on and they're not even going to take any fucking chances with O'Neal. Why not have him beat Sheamus? It makes no fucking sense. I mean, like, what is it? What's so special about Sheamus? I understand you want to protect certain people like Triple H and Cena and shit like that. That's okay. But why Sheamus? Why, you know, the same thing with Orton. Orton can't lose. But, you know, it's okay for, like, you know, Sheamus. What, what, is, what is everybody not going to lose? There's going to be these five guys that are never going to lose. What? kind of fucking company is this that has these guys that are nearly invincible that can't be beaten by anybody they just keep winning matches without fail it's unbelievable it's stupid it's dumb it's getting old stale you know how many times are we supposed to watch the same repeat this is like you know if i was watching a shitty episode of a television show i wouldn't keep watching the same shitty episode somehow i find myself doing that week after week then uh, it's Paul Heyman, the big reveal. The big reveal. Who is going to be his next fucking star? And I thought it was going to be like the Shield or some shit. No. Instead, it's Michael fucking McGillicuddy. Out of fucking nowhere. And they act like the guy... You know, they, they don't mention anything about him that, you know, he won the tag team titles or that he was, you know, Michael McGillicuddy. They, you know, they, they're now referring to him as uh, Curtis Axel. They might have mentioned something about McGillicuddy, but it didn't catch my ear. Um, you know, first of all, what I find funny about this is, you know, he said, this is right. He said, you know, they all booed uh, Brock Lesnar when he first came out. But, you know, Michael McGillicuddy, um, the guy really doesn't have a look. You know, Punk has a look. Brock Lesnar had a look. This guy, it's kind of plain looking. Just a dude with a beard, really. I know you could say the same thing about me, but I ain't in the fucking wrestling business. So there you go. Uh, anyway, it's like, you know, this guy, he was already there. Jerry the King Lawler had a storyline where he was calling this motherfucker boring when he was tagging with Otunga. You know, it's like he was there with Punk, and he was there with Orton punting him in the head, and they're, like, not acknowledging this shit at all, and it's like it's a brand new guy, you know, and he's just a fucking jobber. I saw Fan Nation on the fucking website on YouTube. The guy was just on Superstars. How do you go from Superstars all the way to the fucking top? No. No. I'm sorry. It does not work that way. You can't just simply do that. Unless, you know, it's like, okay, I understand if you go to indi the Indies and you kind of pull it right to the top. But, you know, the guy was already there. He already had a chance, and he failed to impress, and just all of a sudden, boom, he's right there. It's not like they got anybody else, you know? It, it, like, there's a whole bunch of other fucking talented wrestlers, you know, that, that they refuse to, to bring up from NXT, guys like Pac and shit like that. Why not Pac instead of Michael McGillicuddy? Just because he had a famous dad. And the thing is, just because your dad is good, doesn't mean that you're good. And it's like that in, you know, in movies. It's it's like that in music. And, you know, not just wrestling. It's always like that. They think that just because you had a popular parent means that you're good. I'm not saying the guy's terrible. Well, he's decent. But he ain't the top level to be there with Paul Heyman and talking him up like he's some type of hot shit. He ain't that, you know? I could make the joke and say that he's shit, but... He ain't that bad, but seriously, it's like, uh, you know, eh, but you know, you would think that'd be okay, you know, yeah, okay, some new wrestler, they're, they're pushing someone new, I can live with that, it's somebody fresh, something new, everything's stale, somebody new, that motherfucker comes out, and as soon as they're introducing a new fucking star, motherfucking Triple H has to stick his goddamn huge schnoz and everybody's business. It's bad enough he's fucking the boss's door. He's married into the McMahon family. The guy does not want a job. Wouldn't even put over the fastest rising star in the, the fucking company's history. CM Punk. 
wooden job to him just to put him over. Wrestling is fake, but for God fucking sakes, he ain't going to lose a fucking wrestling match. If they make him feel like they're attacking his character or personality or some shit. I mean, for God fucking sakes, it's fake. It's fake fucking wrestling. Yes. You know, it's awesome and all that. And I love wrestling, but at the end of the day, it is fake. It is a performance. It is like an aggressive movie, you know? At the end of the day, that's what it is. It's fucking television. And the guy fucking has a heart attack just because he lost a match last night to Brock Lesnar. The guy comes out, ain't even fucking selling shit. Looks like he spent the whole fucking last night on a beach or some shit. Poolside, sipping a martini, having the time of his life. Not like he was in a brutal fucking steel cage match with Brock Lesnar. No. Taking it easy, walking down, all hot shit and all that. Gets on the mic, starts punking out McGillicuddy for, you know, and, and, and then, you know, just slaps him. McGillicuddy falls down from a fucking slap. Falls on his ass from a slap to the face. And doesn't do shit about it. Made to look like a bitch. This is supposed to be McGillicuddy's big moment. Here I am. I'm going to be the next rising star. And out comes Triple H. Triple H writes this shit. He fucking books some of the matches. Most of the show is Triple H. He claims to have projects like Sandow. Yet Sandow is jobbing all the time. And here you go. I guess this was another project. What's the project? To make him look like a fucking goof? I mean, here you have a potential star. They're all ready to make him big. Why the fuck did they mess it up like this? Making him look like a bitch. This is his debut. And he wants to compare McGillicuddy to Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, when he debuted, destroyed the shit out of everybody. McGillicuddy gets slapped. He falls on his ass like a fucking pussy. All because of Triple H. Because he can't stand in the fake form of entertainment that he lost, so he has to regain his heat. This imaginary thing, you know, it, 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 it's like, it's, it's completely unimaginable. It, it's imaginary heat. None of this shit exists. There are no faces. There are no heels. It is all a television show. Yet Triple H takes it to heart. And he will not help anybody look good. This would be like if you're acting in a movie. Say it was Christian Bale and Robert Downey Jr. Christian Bale purposely fucks up his lines to make Robert Downey Jr. look bad. Or he constantly keeps tripping him or making him perform bad on purpose. That's exactly what it's like. It's just like fucking shit up on purpose for no fucking reason or if the director was writing shitty lines for, for the actors uh, writing shitty lines for uh, for say um, Robert De Niro so he looked like a goof it makes no fucking sense but they're gonna have a match tonight then it's on to Biggie Langston and Del Rio nothing special here I was bored a little interference and Del Rio is uh, defeated like he's nothing. You know, didn't he just win the number one contendership in a fucked up fashion? But nonetheless, this is this is your fucking number one contender. The uh, fucking number one contender looks like a fucking job or looks like a fucking ham and egger. What the fuck is going on here? This ain't a number one contender. This is a fucking pussy. Yeah, I, I mean... They, how are they booking this shit? Is there any rhyme or reason to anything that happens on this show? Apparently not. Then it's AJ defeating Layla for no fucking reason. It's just there. Let's have a Divas match. It was a little bit hot. That uh, Layla was kind of feeling up on AJ's ass as she was tapping out. Hey, hey, you know, I'll take what I can get on this show, you know. Hey, no shame in being a pervert, you know? Ha <laughs> ha. But, uh, yeah, nah, not that good. <laughs> then you got Cody Rhodes defeating Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder looked pretty aggressive in this match, but it was just a squash match. And then after that, Ryback makes an example out of him, just completely destroys fucking Zack Ryder, throws him in the back of an ambulance. How is this man not committed suicide already? The guy... Just looks like a, a fucking goof 
just every single fucking weekend his ass kicked. What is the purpose? I mean, what does WWE want to do? Do they just want to just make a fool out of the man? Do they not like him or something? The man has made them quite a bit of money with the merchandise. You know, he's gotten them the majority of the views on their fucking fan nation. At one point, nobody was watching anything but Zack Ryder's fucking show. Zack Ryder made this fucking company a ton of fucking money. He might have lost viewers for them, but he may still made them money. Still, the fans, the hardcore fans made WWE a ton of money by buying Zack Ryder shit. And this is how they were paid to people who did them a favor and made them money, you know, based on their own hard work. Then you got uh, The Shield defeating uh, Daniel Bryan, Kane, and Kofi Kingston, the six-man tag. And this match was fucking awesome. This is the problem with Raw. You've got something that just totally fucking awesome. What a fucking match this was. What performances. Even Kane looked like he was doing a good job. But Daniel Bryan. Holy fucking shit. Why is Daniel Bryan not in the title picture? In the next couple of months, if this man is not in the title picture, abandon all fucking hope. This man was... I never heard the crowd pop so loud for a man. You know, when it was warranted. And that was... You know, he looked like a million bucks. Um, same thing, you know, Rollins and Ambrose. The guys are just, they are the company right now. These guys are the fucking company. Without them, you would have no company. Granted, a couple of good matches last night at Extreme Rules made for a good show. But that was only because they felt like having a good show. These guys, every single night when they go out there, they're putting on, you know, more than what's asked of them. And this was this was beyond good. It was a great match. I haven't seen a match this caliber in a while. It, you know, they've had a couple of, you know, pretty decent good matches the past couple of weeks this year when they've been teaming. But every single fucking week it gets better and better. And Ambrose... I swear to God, there should be some type of movement. We should every every wrestling fan in the world should fucking riot if he ain't main eventing by WrestleMania 30. I mean, the guy has got all the charisma, all the in ring talent. Uh, you know, a fan could ask for, a promoter could ask for, anybody could ask for. It's all about Dean Ambrose and it's all about Daniel Bryan. This should be like a major fucking feud between them. I say blow all the shit up. Make it like some crazy thing. You know, I, I got even got an idea. It's like, you know, I, I don't know. Daniel Bryan, maybe they should make like, you know, he's the fact that he's dating a Bella twin. Make like uh, fucking uh, Dean Ambrose is stalking his girlfriend or some shit like that. You know, he's got that creepy look. He's got the Brian Pillman thing going on with the psycho loose cannon type of gimmick, you know. Do something with that. For God fucking sakes, do something worthwhile with all that potential. Then there's a big vote. Ooh, the big voting app. I know you logged right onto your fucking app and voted for this fucking match. You got fucking Orton. Uh, you got Orton, Kali, and R-Truth. And I've never seen such a sorry ass poll in all my life. Now you really think that anyone's gonna pick that big goof with gigantism? Or you think anybody's gonna pick that stale motherfucker R Truth? The guy who can't decide if he's got an imaginary friend or he wants to keep singing the song that he's been singing for fucking five years. You know, so Orton ends up winning this shit. And it's a boring fucking match! And he jobs. It, Swagger jobs out to Orton. Swagger, the guy who last night had the, uh, an important match, a number one contenders match, jobbing out like he's fucking nothing, like he's a jobber basically, to fucking Randy Orton. Why does everybody who has potential, who is better than Orton, why must they job to him? Everybody in this fucking company is better than Randy Orton. Everybody overrates him to shit. His match was shit last night. It fucking sucked. It was all praise because he did a fucking kick to, head, to the head of the Big Show. A kick to the head. This ain't anything to get all bent out of shape. This ain't anything to jerk off to. I'm sorry. 
Why do we give so much praise to Randy Orton, a man who performs the same five fucking moves every single match? Boring us to death. Week after fucking week with the same fucking match. Why is Orton not treated the same way as Cena here in the YWC or even in the whole internet wrestling community? Fuck this motherfucker. I hate him. I seriously can't wait till he gives in to temptation, takes roids or whatever fucking drug comes his way first and gets himself fucking fired. Because that's exactly what he deserves. Another egotistical motherfucker who just cannot fucking just, you know, cope with the fact that he's been there for 10 years and other people are better than him and deserve to go over. Then we come to our main event of the evening. Triple H versus Michael McGillicuddy or Curtis Axel, whichever you prefer. I'm still calling him Michael McGillicuddy because that's who he really is. Um, so this match here, you know, I was anticipating it. I thought it was just going to be a straight burial. I thought it was going to be like, you know, f whatever, just Triple H kicking his ass. So it goes on for a little bit, and then Triple H starts, like, acting super weird, sitting down, asking the timekeeper to pour water over his fucking head. And then, uh, and then the Raw just stops, just ends with Triple H just collapsing and, ah, you know, some type of weird thing because he kept hitting him in the jaw. I don't know what this is, like. Triple H isn't feeling good. You stupid motherfucker! I hate you! Triple H. Triple H. And this is it, folks. Triple H. I never in my whole fucking life forget about Orton. Forget about John Cena. I have never seen a motherfucker as overrated as Triple H is. We all got to bow down to the King of Kings, Triple H. The guy who hasn't moved the same since 2002. That's right. He was never the same when he came back. The man who fucking polluted WWE with Evolution. A faction that got so fucking stale that he beat everybody. They wouldn't put anybody over. It was boring to shit. You had Triple H uh, burying Goldberg back then, refused to put the man over even though, you know, they brought him in to win the title. But nope, because Triple H didn't want to win. So this continued to go on. Triple H was supposed to retire long ago. You know something? Let me just say it right fucking now. I wish that motherfucker when he got injured in 2001, I wish that that was fucking it. Because ever since then, just think about it. That ever since Triple H came back, it was all fucking downhill after that injury. Fucking buried the shit out of every single motherfucker after that. Even though he couldn't even move half the time. Kept getting injured. Still, even when he was injured, still kept wrestling. Still kept on putting shitty ass matches on. Stale matches. You know, and when they were good matches, it was because other people did the work for him. And now tonight... They bring out a guy who they want to make a star, but something is wrong. Triple H is running the show, so there can't be any new stars. Why? Because Triple H just lost the match, and he can't wait to get his fucking heat back. An imaginary thing. There is no such thing as heat, because there is no such thing as any of this fucking kayfabe fucking bullshit. It's all fake. It's all part of the fucking show. Why can't we just have an entertaining show where people play their roles? Where Triple H could just lose a match and not have to fucking rage because he fucking lost. I, I mean, it's not like a baseball game or it ain't like some type of shit like that. Whether you win or lose, you're still getting paid for fuck's sake. You're, you're fucking the boss's daughter you're married to her you're fucking writing the shows you're working with the talent why are you still fucking wrestling and holding people back from getting over i don't give a shit about michael mcgillicuddy getting over 
But the thing is, this is what they want to do, so why don't they do it? It's their decision. Why fucking waste my time with a fucking 20 minute co uh, coronation? This is the next big star, Paul Heyman's latest acquisition. And then just fuck it all up because Triple H wants to hog the fucking spotlight with some type of lame brain fucking injury storyline. Just enough. You bored us half to death. Like fucking uh, 50 Raws dedicated to Triple H and Brock Lesnar. He even goes on last. Goes on after the, the world title match. And, and uh, you know, it's still not enough. Still has to hog Raw. This shit is going into overtime. And he's there hogging Raw up into the very last second. The show fades to black. He's got to be out there. It's the last image you see as Raw goes off the air. Not the guy they just introduced, but the guy that's been there since fucking 1995. Holy shit. This company is fucked up. They put on a good pay-per-view. Then the very next night, they, they give us a good match with the Shield. But then they go and fuck everything up. The rest of the show is fucking awful. Triple H is a fucking cancer. Can he keep his big fucking nose out of the fucking company already? Stay backstage. Do whatever you want to do. But your presence. Your presence is not needed there. You're just a fucking waste of oxygen. And with that fucking schnoz... I'm telling you, he's taking up all the oxygen from all the wrestlers. Maybe that's why this fucking shit's so goofy. Because nobody can fucking breathe. They're all acting stupid. Lack of oxygen to the brain because of Triple H's fucking nostrils sipping that shit up. All right. This Raw had one really good match, an epic match, but it's too bad. Because it's for over three hours of bullshit, a Triple H burying fucking young stars and a bunch of other shitty matches and just an example of how this company's not ready to move forward. They're just in stasis or going backwards or wherever the fuck they're going. Out of business. All right. I didn't like this show, but props to The Shield and Daniel Bryan. Just want to say that, but other than that, fuck this shit.